Imagine watching your favorite show instantly dubbed in your own language, not by a studio, but by AI running right inside your TV. That's where Cam AI is headed. The deep tech startup known for its generative speech and real-time translation models has just announced a collaboration with Broadcom to bring its AI capabilities directly onto Broadcom's chipsets. This partnership could redefine how Edge AI works, powering real-time voice translation and dubbing on devices like TVs, set-top boxes, and even mobile phones, all running natively on Broadcom hardware. For Broadcom, it's a signal of how serious the company is about AI acceleration at the edge. And for Cam AI, it marks a pivotal moment, moving from being a software innovator to a player shaping the future of AI-powered hardware experiences. I caught up with Akshit Prakash, co-founder and CTO of Cam AI, for an exclusive interaction right before this big announcement. He breaks down what the collaboration means for them, for creators, for consumers, and for the multilingual internet. This is Point Break. Hi, Akshat. Uh, nice to meet you after a long Hi, time. How have you been? been? Good, good. I hope you're doing well. Yeah, yeah, I'm good too, Akshat. So I guess we're here because you have a very good, exciting announcement. So would love to know all about it. Yeah, so go ahead, yeah. Akshat. Yeah, absolutely. So Vandana, you know, like Cambay has been in the speech and translation space for a while. We've been uh, building our own foundational tech towards enabling speech to speech translation for some of the world's biggest enterprises across the world. And uh, we're very fortunate to do this as a small company because what that means is we naturally end up building not huge models, uh, you know, and they're, they're often much smaller in size. So as we kept building towards the broadcasting world and all the things that we're doing in sports and media, in the last eight months, the breakthrough that we've been working on is being able to fit these small models anywhere. And today, what we can announce is that we worked with Broadcom to port, in our opinion, the first generative speech models to the chipset, the 7116 Broadcom chipset. Mm -hmm. And that kind of enables this truly futuristic world that we might have felt futuristic where you can have native voice, speech, and translation capabilities right on common devices like set-top boxes to, to phones to, to really anything else and, and kind of any of the eventual devices that a Broadcom chipset goes into. But we're really looking at a world that's kind of device first, consumer first, um, not kind of restricted by the economics of cloud but that can truly reach, you know, 8 billion people. I think when I last spoke to you, I might have mentioned that our goal is to redesign the internet for 8 billion people. And sometimes that could sound like an impossible mission, but when breakthroughs like this happen, they actually allow us to get closer to truly 8 billion people. So yeah, that's that's kind of what Cambia has been doing and what we're pursuing in, in uh, with, with Broadcom and and chipsets and whatnot. So uh, when is this expected to roll out, Akshat, in terms of like we'd be having it on our phone or devices that you mentioned? Yeah, so the first, one of the use cases that we've done is things like audio descriptions, real-time subtitling, real-time subtitle transcription, um, even end-to-end -end dubbing, etc., on the chipsets. These chipsets that we're typically talking about go into consumer set-top boxes across the United States and, and other places. Um, Broadcom, I think, holds most of the market share towards such devices. Um, and that's the, the first thing. And typically how kind of the, the chipset world works is um, it's not, of course, direct to consumer, like we're not selling the chipset to, to computer, but it goes into the devices, which then is distributed, right? And so at the moment, Broadcom and KMBI, we are distributing these AI-enabled, speech-enabled chipsets to all of the device manufacturers, right? Um, so we can't specifically take names of these customers because of the three-way NDA. Uh, but you know, these chipsets, which will power these experiences within these devices, are already actively being being distributed and, and talked about. So um, 
you know, in, in terms of like the end timeline when you on your TV perhaps can enjoy an AI powered set top box or a device, uh, still, a, still perhaps a bit of time, a few months out. But in terms of like unlocking that business flow of, of mm -hmm. distribution and, uh, you know, cycles, that is something that Broadcom and Cambia have, have established now, outside of the, of course, technology. Okay, that's great. And and uh, can you tell me why Broadcom, the decision to partner with them? Yeah, so I mean, I think it's it's common knowledge today that Broadcom is the world's leader in, in chipset manufacturing, software manufacturing, and 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 ev everything else. I think most recently, if you see the the sixth or seventh most valuable company um, in the world. So Broadcom has the highest mind share and and market share across. Um, you know, technology like this. So it only made sense for us to do this. Secondly, a lot of the experiences that we power are, are at the end of the day consumer experiences, right? So we're not necessarily working on things like conversational voice bots within, you know, certain enterprises or whatnot. At the end of the day, we're powering real-time sports commentary or end-to-end -end movie dubbing or real-time subtitling, you know. All of these, you know, by nature of them, they're end consumer experiences. So we have to be in a place that powers end consumer experiences, which at the chipset level is somebody like uh, a Broadcom. But as you can see, probably uh, given that we've been able to achieve this on a chipset, uh, it does mean that we can fit our model in, in much smaller or much more diverse places as well. Okay, and, and with this partnership, uh, do you see yourself uh, positioning yourself as an infrastructure infrastructure grade AI company, you know, rather than say a content localization player. Yeah, I think I think we've always said that and we've always positioned ourselves like that. I don't know, frankly, if it's been clear enough to the universe yet. Um, but we've always said that we're building the localization infrastructure for the internet. Um, mm -hmm. And and we truly mean that, right? Everything that we've executed upon the types of partnerships we've executed upon, uh, the types of customers we have, uh, they all point towards the localization play, even independent of looking at us on what we've achieved at the chip. Uh, but now more so with this uh, establishment, it makes it much more clear on, on what we do. Our goal has never to be a TTS company, an AI dubbing company, a translation company. We've always been a localization infrastructure for enterprise. and. You know, the types of people we work with are, are representative of that fact. So um, it's funny that you ask that because that's literally just the first line on our investor deck, on our sales tech. Uh, but of course, us by nature being enterprise B2B, uh, that's more on direct communications than it is perhaps in, in the open internet as, as knowledge. Good. And uh, just a, a call out to the recent Broadcom OpenAI partnership. I think they partnered with OpenAI on AI accelerators. So uh, does this collab, I, I mean, I'm not sure, but does this collab give CAM AI access to that same new chip ecosystem or that's probably a separate engagement? Yeah, I, unfortunately I can't comment on that uh, because that's okay. not in the scope of what we are uh, at sure. the moment um, talking about. But um, yeah, as, as you can imagine, I think the, it's kind of like saying, you know, people have, uh, liked the concept of on-device, direct-to-consumer AI for a long time. The economics make the most sense, the distribution makes the most sense. But until now, before Broadcom and Camb AI came together, there's not really a very, very clear uh, enablement distribution of such tech uh, on, on consumer applications like set top boxes itself, right? So I think what this definitely opens the door to is like, the practicality of this being a real world thing, real world economics, rather than this being an afterthought that one day we will get distribution from cloud to edge, right? Um, so I think it's a stepping stone towards that and uh, hopefully an accelerant to, to many of the things that will be coming in on device. Good, actually. And uh, just from my understanding, so now you have a lot of these AI chatbots also, which are doing these live translation, and all those are enabled on our devices. So uh, do you think what you're offering through Broadcom is also kind of on the same lines and somewhere it's a different form of competition that you're dealing with? 
Um, so I think what's important to think about here is that um, the level of integration that we've achieved with somebody like a Broadcom is not an exact parallel to what models being deployed on mobile phones be, might be. So for example, if you download an app that is using perhaps some on-device uh, models and, and stuff to do conversational AI in multiple languages, uh, if you delete the app, it's more likely or not those models would go away as well, right? Now, okay. the integration that we're talking about is much, much closer to the chipset at an OS software layer that any application on a Broadcom chipset can actually use, right? So I think that hierarchy and that differentiation to make is, is, is important. So whereas some people might offer um, AI models on the edge within their apps, we are like to very much the point we're making, we're actually offering the speech and localization infrastructure on the edge for people to deploy their content, but then also, of course, you know, there's Android apps, et cetera, on your TV and whatnot to actually yeah. natively use those capabilities um, day one, right? So we're, I think we're much more horizontal in that regard on the on-device side at the moment, uh, rather than thinking about it as like, you know, us having bundled our app, or, you know, our models in an app or something. Okay, got it. Actually. And uh, from the last time we spoke, if you could just sum up how your journey has been with Cam AI and, and also tell me what next after this. Yeah, absolutely. So we've grown to over 60 people worldwide. We have offices in the US, in the, the Middle East, in uh, Japan. Uh, we've grown uh, our customer base from anywhere from North America to, to Australia. We've announced many significant partnerships in the world of media and sports. Uh, we've also raised quite a bit more today. Our total funding stands at around 18.5 million, um, with all still pre-A. Um, so in, in those regards, you know, our, our, our business looks perhaps fundamentally different just a few months ago than what we spoke. Uh, but that's the yeah. that's the cool part about being at CAMBI. Things are just growing so fast. And uh, what's really cool is that the demand for speech to speech, multilingual, etc., is now becoming a focal point for more, more and more businesses, more and more enterprises. Uh, so it's really becoming a need to have rather than a want or nice to have, uh, which is also driving a lot of the adoption. Whether you talk about it in the cloud, whether you talk about it across the domain, or whether you talk about it as of today on the edge. Good, good, actually. Sounds exciting. I mean, is India in the plans in the future? Probably setting an office here? Um, so we, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, <laughs> interesting that you ask this question because uh, we, by any culturally speaking, uh, founder mentality wise speaking, we are Indian founders, right? Uh, mo a lot of our company is Indian founders and we're just like two hours away from, uh, from Delhi. The way I I'd often tell people is like, look, if you could uh, relocate to Bangalore, you could relocate to Dubai as well. It's the same distance flight time. <laughs> from, from, yeah. From Delhi. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, no, we, we officially don't have an office in India yet, but very, very soon. Uh, but that's to say, for all practical purposes, um, India is one of our markets. I, I don't know if you're aware, but we signed with India Today it to be there. Yes, yes. Um, you know, translation partner. We signed with Fancode, with whom we did the entirety of the Caribbean Premier League, all live streamed in multiple languages, which Hindi was one of the languages. Uh, so we have like, you know, employees in, in, uh, um, in India, we have colleagues in India, we have business in India, uh, but just if you talk to me about brick and mortar and, and uh, four walls yet, that's just perhaps the last thing that's lacking. Uh, but, but India has always been center of mind because it's what's given us the gift of me growing up, this experience and this motivation uh, and the know-how to even think about building something like this. Um, outside of how culturally relevant such technology is for Indian businesses um, and otherwise. All right. All right. Yeah. Uh, great, Akshay. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for giving me the info yeah, on, no, thank you. on this. This announcement is pretty big. As AI 
AI moves closer to the edge, collaborations like Cam AI and Broadcoms are setting the stage for a future where intelligence isn't locked in the cloud. It lives inside the devices we use every day. From chip to voice, from content to connection, this is where the next leap in AI innovation is happening. That's all for this episode of Point Break. I'm Vandana Nair. Thanks for watching. And as always, stay sharp, stay curious. Think AI, think AIM. Thank you.